Welcome to the Vision Quest video series, a step-by-step -step guide to holistic health. This program will discuss reflexology. Hi, my name is Tony Gallardi. I'm a psychotherapist, talk show host, and writer. I've been working with people in adult transition and crisis for about 15 years. I did a talk show for two years called The Tony Gallardi Show that interviewed risk takers, people who had left chaotic lives and impassioned their lives with brand new vocations. And then I went on to start a book called Lifequake, which is all about a seven-stage map to a whole new way of being an adult. We'll be talking about the origin of reflexology. Some say that it dates back 2,000 years before Christ. Modern reflexology goes back to the year 1917. We'll be talking about the precautions involved in reflexology and the philosophy behind reflexology, the 10 zones of the body where all the organs are situated in one of these zones. The practice of reflexology is based on the principle that there are specific areas or reflex points on the feet, hands, ears and head which correspond to each organ, gland or structure in the body. By massaging these reflexes, the reflexologist reduces the tension built up all over the body. Well, reflexology is a holistic therapy in which the whole body is treated through working on either the hands, the feet, the ears or sometimes the face. Um, it, it was found back at the beginning of the century that there are pressure points in the feet, hands and ears and face for all the different parts of the body and so by pressing in a, on a, in a certain way on these reflexes we affect those parts of the body. Um, we tend to bring about a deep sense of relaxation at that point where there is an imbalance and um, leading to a, balance, a better balance within the body. The primary benefit of reflexology is the release of tension in the body, allowing the recipient to feel totally relaxed. However, by reducing this tension, reflexology has also been found to increase blood circulation, restore nerve functioning and establish balance within the body. Since most of today's illnesses are a result of stress, a reflexology treatment from a qualified practitioner can provide benefit from a wide range of ailments which may include headaches and migraines, sinus problems in the eyes or nose, sore throats, stiffness in the back or neck, high blood pressure, circulatory problems, indigestion or heartburn. The best reflexologist will always work intuitively but you'll always be working with physical stresses as well. Obviously with the tension in the neck and shoulders you might spend more time working out that stress and tension until the pain has gone. Likewise a lower back pain, you, might, you would work on the areas until the pain had reduced. But intuition plays a great part in knowing where to work and when and how long. There are many origins of reflexology. It's a very ancient therapy. It goes back thousands of years. Um, we see it has its roots in Egypt, two and a half thousand years before Christ. There's a mural on, a, on the physician's tomb in Saqqara which shows people practicing reflexology. So it's um, obviously been used in that culture, in China and uh, in different parts of Asia. It goes back a long way. But the origins of reflexology as we know it today come from America back in the 1920s, basically. It was um, discovered by a, um, an ear, nose and throat specialist, Dr. William Fitzgerald, who discovered that there are zones in the body which end in the hands and, and feet, and these zones reflect the different parts of the body that fall within each zone into, into the foot at that, at that point. He actually used that for anaesthetization. He didn't really follow it through any further than that. He used to put pegs and rubber bands and, and um, clamps and things on the fingers to anaesthetize parts of the face. So if he wanted to anaesthetize something that was on the outside of the face, he'd put a peg on the little finger. And if he wanted to anaesthetize something in the center, central part of the face, 
he'd put one on the thumb. And that's basically how he used it. But other doctors who worked with him and were interested in this theory developed it further into um, reflexology and into this chart here. Um, Dr. Joe Shelby Riley and Eunice Ingham, who was a physical therapist working with him, um, worked on the feet and hands and discovered these reflex points. That was back in the 1920s. I believe that Dr. Riley was examining the patients and, and uh, making a diagnosis, whereas Eunice Ingham was working on the feet and finding where, where the imbalances showed up, which tender reflexes showed up. And I suspect that because the chart is so logical and all the reflexes fall into the feet and hands in an anatomical way, um, for instance, um, if you look at the chart, you'll see that the toes represent the head zones and the ball of the foot, the chest zones, and the arch of the foot, the abdominal zones, and the uh, heel represents the pelvic zones of the body, that they would have soon found that the reflexes fell into the areas in, in that way, that the, anything to do with the head, they would find the reflexes would be sore in the toe area, whereas if someone had an imbalance in one of the organs of the body, that um, abdominal organs of the body, they would have found it to be tender in the arch part of the foot. And if it was, say, the liver, which is on the right side of the body, they would have found it to be tender on the right foot in that abdominal area. And I, I don't think that would have taken a very long time, actually, because the reflexes are so logically positioned. Well, there are, actually. There's, um, I suppose, a lot of the techniques that we use in the West is ba are based on the Ingham method, which was developed by Eunice Ingham. Uh, the lady I was talking about before, whereas in China and different parts of Asia they tend to follow a technique called the Roshua technique, which is um, a lot firmer and very painful, and often they use implements on the feet, so they'll use a, a, a stick with a rounded end or something like that, and they'll press into the feet very firmly with, with that. Um, Western reflexologists really generally only use their hands, their fingers and thumbs to exert the pressure. Certainly there are. there are. There are different theories. Each person who comes along and studies has different theories as to how things work, whether it's a French system, whether it's a Chinese system. Basically, if it works, that's great. Just we're, We've now learnt to go with what feels good. If you're working with a system and it's making everyone feel better, then go with it. That's great. The practice of reflexology relies heavily on thorough knowledge of the zone theory. The zone theory explains the links between the reflexes on the head, feet and hands and the rest of the body. Any organ, gland or part of the body that is situated within a certain zone will have its reflex in that corresponding zone in the head, foot or hand. For instance, the reflex for the spine corresponds to the zone which runs along the inside of both feet and is labelled as zone 1. The foot reflex chart depicts the exact location of the reflexes which correspond to various parts of the body. The foot reflexes represent a map of the body mirroring the location of the various organs in the body. The two feet are very similar. However, some reflexes may only appear on one foot because they lie on one side of the body. For example, the heart reflex is on the left sole, while the liver reflex is on the right. The theory behind reflexology is to bring the body back into balance. So you might have organs that are underworking, organs that are overworking. If you do a complete reflexology session, you're helping to bring all the organs back into balance. That way, if the body's working properly, it's then enabling itself to heal itself. You're going to feel great. You're going to have more energy, more enthusiasm, more sparkle in your life, basically. Well, some conditions respond better when they're worked on in the hands. Some work some better with the feet and some better with the ears. So it will just depend on what the problem is of the person, which areas we might concentrate on. And, and the, the zones are all related, I guess. Like do you have... Um well, um, reflexology is one of that group of microcosmic um, therapies in which one sees the whole of the body reflected in one area. 
So the feet, you see the whole of the body, reflexes for the whole of the body, the hands the same, the ears the same, and of course with iridology also you see the whole body reflected in the, in the eyes. And there are other areas of the body, for instance on the head and on the face where you'll find areas for the whole body reflected. So it's part of that scheme of things, those sort of therapies. We are working on energy and we're aware of the energy that we're feeling in the feet, but there is a reason for sedating or stimulating. Generally we stimulate because our bodies tend to, if they're not well, tend to become lethargic and, and uh, need stimulation for, for them to come into balance. But sometimes if people have a lot of pain in an area where they have inflammation, say they have sciatica or they have a toothache or they have um, abdominal cramps or something where there's a lot of pain, um, it wouldn't be very good to stimulate it because it, stimulation tends to increase the circulation to that part of the body, it increases the energy flow, it increases the nerve supply and so that's not good if you've already got pain there. So it's much better to sedate an area if, if there is intense pain and it works very well. People who've had sciatica have got off the table and not had it again after just holding those reflex points for two minutes. Reflexology works on many levels. It works for physical complaints, as in your neck tension, your lower back pain, your PMS, headaches. A lot of people are stressed, and it certainly helps. You, you saw my patient before. It's, it's great for stress. It works for all the physical, but it also goes deeper. It works with the emotional, with the feelings, and also works with the spiritual level as well. You can do so much with reflexology. It's just amazing. So I find myself working more and more with the whole person, with the whole body, not, not just physical complaints. Mm -hmm. And I guess that one of the primary things would be to help stress. Absolutely. Um, reduce, help reduce stress, increase energy, isn't that right? That's right. My saying is minimize stress, maximize health. So if you can, if you can get your stress levels down to controllable levels, then you're able to concentrate on all the other good things in your life. As I said, more energy in your life, more enthusiasm, puts that sparkle back in your eyes. We can't diagnose through the feet. So although we can say, right, the liver reflex is tender, we can't say if there's something wrong with the liver, but we can say that there's tension in that area. Uh, that tension may be caused by disease, but it, it may just be tension. Uh, and tension is a precursor to disease. So wherever there's a tender reflex, it means there's tension and therefore um, a possible imbalance in the body leading later to disease if this isn't corrected. There are lines on the feet that indicate past operations, indicate susceptibility to things like arthritis, indicate emotional stress, indicate um, problems with neck tension even, in lines on toes. There's just, I could go on forever, there's, there are whole books about how to read the feet and it's just, just fascinating. Well, reflexologists are aware of the meridians and use meridian points as well, but no, reflexology isn't really related to the meridian system. The points are different, and reflexologists, Western reflexologists use the Western medical approach to their treatments, uh, whereas Eastern reflexologists would use more an Eastern approach following meridian theory. Yes, we call this thumb walking, um, and it, it's, it's quite a good technique to use because you have a lot of control over how far you move and how quickly you move up, up the uh, hand or the foot. So each time you bend, this is called a bite, each time you bend you press in. The bites can be very, very close together, whereas if you lift up your hand and put it down again on another point, you could miss a whole lot of reflex points in between. It's not as if reflexology is only oh, six points on your hand. It's the whole hand or the whole foot uh, reflects the whole body. So we want to work on as many of those reflex points as we can. And this te technique is very good for that. 
Um, but you can do micro rotations on points, which is quite important to do if you find a tender reflex. Um, there's a hook in and back up technique where you, for very deep reflexes, there are several reflexes that are very deep, where we use a lot of deep pressure. Um, and pivoting techniques where you pivot the foot or the hand onto the thumb. So there are a variety of techniques you can use, as well as just sedation techniques. If someone has a very uh, tender reflex, it's a hot one, one that you can hardly touch, it's much better to sedate that point rather than stimulate it because that part of the body must be, um, probably there's some information or infection present. Uh, it's much better just to hold that point rather than work over it. We started the session working on the hands. The hands are really good for relaxing the body. So first of all, I worked on the fingers and the thumb, which represent the head. The fingers and the thumb are about 50% of the hand, so there's a lot of area to work there. And within a few minutes, the client is, is really relaxed. So we're working away. We work down the spinal area of the hand. We work down the arm, the shoulder, across the chest, arm and shoulders, so we're covering the whole body in the hands to totally relax the client. Then we move down to the feet, by which time the, the client is really susceptible to receive healing because she's already relaxed from working on the hands. So we started off with some more basic relaxation exercises on the feet, warm-up techniques to totally relax the client. Then we spend a lot of time working down the spinal area on the inside of the feet, working upwards to raise the energy levels, working downwards if you want to lower energy levels, also to help with stress and headaches and lower back pain in this particular client. From the spinal area, we're working through the bladder, up the kidneys, the, across the adrenal glands, and then the pituitary gland to increase all the hormonal levels. Then we did some work on the lymphatic glands across the top of the feet. Then we worked down all the toes to make sure we covered the eyes and the ears and the neck and the shoulder area. And then we, we worked on the ball of the feet, which represents the lungs and the chest. Working, it also represents the shoulders and that's an area where we often find tension, so you'll work spend a lot of time working out the tension in the shoulders and you can feel from the tension to where you get to the stage where it's loosened up and you know the patient is more comfortable. Then we work in the middle of the foot which represents the stomach and the liver and the gallbladder and the kidneys and the beginnings of the intestines but it also represents the whole emotional area where you carry a lot of your emotions like anger and frustration and pain. So you can work, you can work out a lot when you're working through those areas as to, to what's coming up. It can also raise feelings. Your, your client may start talking to you on an emotional level at that stage, which can be, can be great. The lower part, the bottom part of the foot and the heel represents the pelvic area. You can test for, for dry skin, for rough skin, you can, t you can tell whether the, the person puts more weight on the bottom of their feet, whether they have hemorrhoids, constipation. That's the area where we're working for all those things. Also, on the side, the side of the feet around the heel, for all of the pelvic area, for helping the whole endocrine system. We finish off the reflexology session on the feet with a gentle hold on the solar plexus which is very relaxing, can send babies to sleep, can, can pacify anyone who's distressed, but it's also a really good time to put in affirmations for healing for your client. And you can just feel the energy transference. It's, it's a brilliant, brilliant part of the reflexology. We finish off the reflexology session by working on the ears with a series of very gentle stroking movements to cover the whole ear the inside and around the back of it and we spend some time with acupressure like movements on certain parts of the ear which have been proven to be really beneficial for things like pain, 
neck, lower back, endocrine system, and uterus area, just some marvelous points which had some really profound effects from working on the ears. By this stage, our client is generally totally relaxed, sometimes asleep. The very finishing movement is the lymphatic drainage, which is the only time we work with oils to help draw out the toxins from the body. And we, we do have a series of once again stroking movements, working over all the lymphatics as represented in the feet to draw out the toxins and strengthen the immune system and release fluid. And basically that's your reflexology session. Not difficult, a lot long, but very beneficial. And is each session uh, pretty much individual to uh, the client? Or e each it? session has got to be individual according to the client's needs, maybe different from one week to the next. It's really a matter of sensing out what's required at that time and how long you spend on each, on each part of it. Well, massage is working on the muscles and the joints and just relaxing the foot, basically. So that's relaxing. Reflexology is working. It's a pressure point therapy. So it's working on pressure points under the skin to stimulate them or to sedate them, depending on the, on the problem, to cause an effect somewhere deep within the body. I'd expect a person with flat feet to have lower back problems. Um, a flat foot means a flat arch and the spinal reflexes fall in the arch of the foot or that's where they're positioned. And the part of the foot that's flat uh, is the lower part of the arch which is the lumbar reflex and uh, that's the lower back. So I'd expect that there to be some tension in that area. And what would be the, uh, and the idea of giving them a massage around that area would just alleviate that? Um, not totally, no, because of course every time they walk on their feet they'll be putting stress on that lumbar reflex, but working uh, with reflexology will help redress the problem, so as long as they're having reflexology uh, work on their feet they may have uh, lessening of tension in the area. I'd certainly um, advise them to go to a podiatrist to have orthotics put in their shoes so that they have a, a better arch. Mm. Mm. And how about the bunions and corns and, and things yeah. like that? Yeah, all those sorts of things are really interesting because um, by looking at, at where there's an imbalance in the foot, such as a structural imbalance, you'll know that there's tension in that, in that area. So if a bunion, for instance, falls um, just at the base of the big toe, um, puts a lot of tension on that part of the foot. And that the reflexes associated with that part of the foot are the upper thoracic up here and the lower neck area. So people with bunions very commonly have upper thoracic, lower neck types of problems. And corns um, sit on the toes, and the toes are the head area. So corns show that there's pressure on the, on the foot, probably by the shoes, and may indicate that person suffers from some tension problem in the head area. So it could be, for instance, headaches or sinus problems that show up as symptoms definitely worth having them removed and improving your footwear. Oh, walking in high heels is very bad. Um, from a structural point of view, it, it puts a lot of pressure on the lower back because the back is thrown into a sort of a sway back position. But it also puts a lot of pressure on the chest reflexes, which are in the ball of the foot. So um, that can lead to problems in the chest, breast area. I guess everybody thinks of the feet in terms of reflexology, but there's so much work being done. Um, Bill Floco from America has just been in Australia and certainly shown us how hands, feet and ears can just do marvellous things. You've got three times the potency, three, three, three opportunities to get to heal the body. He's, he's just done the most marvellous work with PMS research. He's had research on PMS published in a medical journal in America. That's absolute validation for reflexology, and that's just a, a taste of what's to come. There was um, one woman who had had chronic sinusitis for 20 years. She'd tried 
everything and nothing had worked. She had this green yellow mucus um, coming out of her sinus all year. It wasn't just once a year, it was all the time. And she came for reflexology. First she discovered it herself and started working on the, her own reflexes and then she came for reflexology treatment and after five sessions the fluid that came out of, out of her sinuses was clear and she was no longer bothered by the sinusitis. That's five or six weeks of reflexology after 20 years of, of this problem. Um, chronic fatigue syndrome can respond very well and I've worked with a number of people with, with this problem. Some people who couldn't work were back at work within three months so that was that's quite a great benefit. Um, men with enlarged prostate glands respond very well to reflexology. I had one elderly gentleman coming, he must have been in his 70s, who had an enlarged prostate and was getting up to go to the toilet um, three or four times a night. And after about five weeks of reflexology, he was getting up once a night. So that was a real benefit to him. And, um, oh, there are so many, so many examples. But a woman with rheumatoid arthritis, she was, she needed helping up to this room, um, onto the table. She was having gold injections and painkillers. And she came regularly for reflexology for, well, for over six months. But after three months, she was already having some real benefits um, in her movement, uh, much less pain, and she was able to get off all medication. Reflexology is an intricate and exact science. Reflexologists do not diagnose or treat medical problems, but allow the body to reduce the overall tension and stress built up in an area which will allow that area to heal itself. Experienced reflexologists know how to detect painful or tender reflexes through the sensitivity of their fingers. Usually after working over a tender area a few times, a reflexologist will then leave that reflex and continue to treat another area, then return to concentrate on it once again until the pain is no longer acute. It is important that tender reflex points are not vigorously or continuously overworked because they can exasperate the tension in that reflex. Oh, I think if reflexology is used um, with sensitivity, you won't get any side effects, but of course, if you do work too hard or too long on the reflexes, you can have some negative side effects. And some people call this a, a healing crisis. And I, so I suppose it's not entirely a negative thing. It's just that not everyone is happy to have this healing crisis if they want to go to work or the next day or whatever. So you might find the body cleansing itself rather rapidly. So that people might suffer from a headache or flu-like symptoms, or they might be going to the toilet a lot more often than they normally do, or they might just feel nauseous. It, it will vary. I would be very cautious with people with vascular problems, people on some anticoagulating drugs, people who have just had heart surgery, the elderly, babies, the frail. You, you must know when to take care when doing reflexology. Basically, there are no contraindications, but you, know, you must know when to take care. Reflexology stimulates the blood supply. So there's an increased blood circulation, especially in the legs, just from working on the feet. And so any uh, health problem that's associated that where it would be dangerous to increase blood circulation, we can't work with, such as uh, blood clots in the legs, um, such as um, inflammation of the veins um, of the legs, um, such as uh, having some sort of infectious disease with, with a high temperature. We wouldn't work with people like that either because anything that stimulates the circulation will put extra stress on the body. Well, doctors don't really know much about reflexology. They don't really understand, understand it, so it's not... Um, I guess they don't believe it. I guess from a scientific point of view it doesn't make sense that the body can be accessed through the feet. I guess it's changing. Yeah, it, it is changing. We've had some um, very interesting research conducted into reflexology and being published in medical journals recently, so uh, that will change. 
we're still getting varying viewpoints from the medical profession on reflexology. Obviously, we've had validation with the PMS research published in a medical journal in America. That's just a major, major breakthrough. In Australia, we get some doctors who do appreciate natural therapies, some who don't. But the trend is becoming more to accept natural therapies, and certainly my own doctor sees the benefit in it and will refer patients to me. There's so much growth in reflexology and all natural therapies. It's just growing and growing. I see the future as people using reflexology as a preventative measure. All you need to do is come along once a fortnight or once a month, top up your energy levels so that you can zip along for the rest of the month. When it gets to the stage where people are using reflexology as a preventative measure, I'll be really, really happy and there'll be far fewer drugs around. Use reflexology instead of your aspirin, I say. I see a great future for reflexology because um, there's never been in the history of reflexology such um, interest in the therapy, such um, interest in, in using and utilising, developing new techniques. Uh, there's never been such um, cooperation and communication between therapists around the world as there is now. Um, and there's never been uh, the activity that, that there is now, such as conferences, um, held all around the world about reflexology and reflexology techniques. So we're all learning from each other and it's, um, it's, it's rapidly growing and the research is happening now. So I see a good future. The soles of our feet, the palms, ears and head of our bodies are a mirror image of the whole body. It is here that energy terminates and reflexology reflexes are found. Reflexology, as with many other holistic healing modalities, aims to rebalance or unblock specific problem areas and allow the body to heal itself.